I want us to pray together quickly. Father, we thank you. We give you praise uh, for this opportunity once again to set you at your feet in order to look at your face in your word. Thank you, Father. Lord, our prayer this evening is that you will not allow us to come in vain. Our prayer is that you will send your word to us, that you bless us tremendously, and that which we alone can do to the glory and to the honor of your holy name. You will do it in our lives. The purpose of this study, Father, let it be evident in our lives by the time we will be closing this evening and you will give us the grace to rise up to uh, go and do what you want us to do in the name of Jesus Christ give us revelation give us understanding Lord let your word come with, on, uh, with simplicity and accuracy in the name of Jesus Christ thank you Father we bless your holy name Lord in the name of Jesus Christ um, we have prayed uh, we thank God for today and I want us to uh, settle down quickly as we begin our studies we have a very important study this evening and um, I trust God that is going to reveal himself to you and I in a new dimension today <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ Amos says something in the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 3 he said uh, he has a question rather that can two work together except they agree that means what exists between two people before they can agree is relationship before they can work together before they can also work together before they can live together relate together there must be a kind of relationship between uh, the parties involved and in other words before you and I also can work with God there must be an agreement there must be a relationship uh, that must be in place before we can work together uh, that the question that we are going to be asking ourselves in these studies this evening is that what type of relationship does God want if we want to work with God what type of relationship what kind of relationship does God require that suggests to us that there are different kinds of of relationship that exist now in order for us to discover that this evening and um, also to discover exactly the kind of relationship that God really expect from us the one that meet the need of its art the one that can actually uh, make God to be happy with us that type of relationship yes we know that God demands relationship there must be relationship if we must flow together with God but if that flow should be the way God wanted then there is a specific 
type of relationship that God wants. And we are praying that tonight He will yet open our eyes. He will open our eyes. He will show us vividly, you know, that there are several, there are, there are, there are a lot of people that are professing uh, to be in relationship with God today. But as far as God is concerned, yes, they are in relationship. But what type of relationship? So I'm praying that you and I will find out tonight the type of relationship that you and I have actually established with God. Whether it is, it is the kind that God requires or the kind that we just uh, formed uh, on our on our own and then uh, we are going along with that and I'm praying that God will open our eyes He will open our eyes in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ we are going to take our study from the book of Genesis we are taking the case study of Jacob in the book of Genesis we are looking at Jacob, one of the uh, children of Isaac, uh, the twin brother of Esau, to be precise, we want to see uh, the dealings of God in the life of Jacob. Jacob as a person and uh, how he related with God and uh, one or two lessons that you and I can learn in order to discover the kind of relationship that God demands from every believer. Hallelujah. Please follow me to the book of Genesis. That's where we are taking our studies. We are going to be reading uh, very long passages. So we have to be very, very fast. We are going to be reading book of Genesis uh, 28 Genesis chapter 28 I will not be reading from uh, verse 1 but I will be reading from verse 10 to the last verse quickly if you have opened your Bible please quickly follow as I read I read from verse 10. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Aran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stair a a with resting on the heart with his top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it there above he stood the Lord and he said I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying your descendants will be like the dust of the heart and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go. And I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob woke, uh, awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it. On top of it, he called the place 
Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Then Jacob made a vow, saying, If God will be with me, and will watch over me on this journey, I am taken, and, I, and will give me food to eat, and clothes to wear, so that I return safely to my father's house old, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tent. Let's go and read quickly the book of Genesis chapter 35. Genesis 35 I read the book of Genesis 35 okay from I'm going to be reading from verse 1 to uh, verse 15 if you have all the time you can read the whole of Genesis 35 uh, later then God said to Jacob go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you were fleeing from your brother Esau. So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him, Get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. Then come, let us go up to Bethel where I will build an altar to God who answered me in the day of my distress, and who has been with me wherever I have gone. So they gave Jacob all the gods, all the foreign gods they had, and the rings in their hair, and Jacob buried them under the hook at Jacob. Then they set out, and the terror of God fell on the towns all around them, so that no one pursued them. Jacob and all the people with him came to lose that is Bethel in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar and he called the place El Bethel because it was there that God revealed himself to him when he was fleeing from his brother. Now Deborah, Rebekah's nurse died and was buried under the hook outside Bethel. So it was named Alombokot. After Jacob returned from Pedanaram, God appeared to him again and blessed him. God said to him, Your name is Jacob, but you will no longer be called Jacob. Your name will be Israel. So he named him Israel. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you. And kings will be among your descendants. The land I give to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you. And I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at the place where he had talked with him. Jacob set, set up a stone pillar at the place where God had talked with him. And he poured out a drink offering on it. He also poured oil on it. Jacob called the place where God had talked with him. Bethel. Praise the name of the Lord. Um, we are looking at Jacob uh, from this story. The story of Jacob is uh, very, very much familiar with us. And um, some of us have read it over and over again. And um, a lot of teachings, a lot of, a lot of uh, studies have been done on these passages that we have read and so therefore we are not talking about anything new at all we are just looking intently into those passages once again uh, to see one or two one or two lessons that we can learn that is in line with our discussion uh, this evening and our discussion is what type of relationship is God actually uh, desiring f 
from us or that he wants us to cultivate with him if we must actually serve him the way he wants what type of relationship uh, does God want to exist between uh, himself and his children now when we look at the story of Jacob very very carefully you discover that uh, before we go to the place that we read um, a lot of things has actually happened between Jacob and um, his brother the Bible recalls that Jacob has actually supplanted um, his brother taking what below his birthright, right and then uh, through the counsel of his mother he had to escape to begin to move to another place so that he can continue his life uh, maybe until uh, the hunger of his brother subsides then he can return back home and as Jacob was going uh, God met Jacob on the way and God started making a lot of promises with Jacob God started telling him what he's going to do or he was going to do with Jacob all those futuristic blessings that God will be bringing uh, to pass in the life of Jacob so God started promising God started telling him you know in a way God was establishing a relationship you know with Jacob there God was the one that reached out to him you know as he was on on the run as he, knowing where I mean knowing not where he was actually heading for you know and after that Jacob began to strike a deal with God that God ah I did not even know that you are here I did not know that God is in this place so ah, so definitely this place must be the presence of God and he said God in this journey that I am going you if you do this he was making some uh, bargain with God he was striking some some deal so to say with God say God if you protect me in this journey and you give me food to eat and clothes to wear then you will be my God and that everything that I we have I will give you the tenth percent so Jacob was also responding to God as God was reaching out to God and to him he was responding to God based on his own understanding remember he was a, a supplanter he was he was on the run he was just running away trying to escape for his life then God came to him to make um, a covenant with him now what we want to actually point out this evening what is our point in this study tonight all those uh, points that we would like for us to actually emphasize are very simple now the first thing that I like us to look critically in this passage of the scripture is that it was not actually Jacob that initiated relationship between him and God it was not Jacob that was actually looking for God it was God that was looking for Jacob Jacob that just supplanted his brother 
and he was running away. God still appeared to him. Now, this shows to you and I that we, are, we were not the one that actually looked for God. It was God that looked for us. Now the Bible says that he said, while we were here sinners, Christ died for us. It was God himself that reached out to us. If not that God reached out to you and I and said, come. I don't think we will have been able to do what? To reach out to him. So God decided to reach out to Jacob and say, please come. Let's establish, establish a relationship. And this is the type of relationship that I want us to establish. But when you if when you notice Jacob, Jacob it was as if Jacob did not get the uh, the the mind of God in this passage that we have read in Genesis uh, chapter twenty eight that we first read. Let's go back to that passage once again and see what the Bible is actually uh, talking about there. Please follow me back to Genesis uh, 28. Now, if you read there after the Lord appeared to him in his dream and uh, you will see that God started making some promises from verse 13 said I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac I will give you and your descendant the land on which you are lying your descendants will be like the dust of the heart, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All people on heart uh, will be blessed through you and your offering. I am with you, and I will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised. Now look at that. Jacob didn't do anything. God decided to come around to tell him what he has proposed to do. God had already made up his mind that everything concerning the life of Jacob will be settled. But because J Jacob has not actually encountered God, then look at what he said again. Look, look at what he began to say. Then Jacob made a vow. Now, I think God was not actually requesting for a vow from Jacob. I think what God was actually requesting from Jacob at this point in time is just what yes Lord then worship you know most of the time when God is telling us what he wants to do with our lives or what he has proposed his, his mind is hard to do for us many of us because we lack understanding we will see we will continue to make uh, to make a bargain with God that God if you will do all these things that you have said now you are not the one that forced God to say it it is not you and I that forced God to make promises with us Jacob was not there when God was actually making all these promises even with with his father with his grandfather Abraham he was not there when God was establishing that covenant with Isaac 
and the same covenant was what God was actually repeating or uh, you know emphasizing to Jacob that look this is what I'm going to do with you regardless of who you are God was saying I don't care the kind of person you are I know what I'm going to do with you so it's like God has made the provision for everything that Jacob was actually making a vow for God told him that look I will take you to this the, the all those places that I'm the places that I'm taking you to I will bring you back I will protect you I will provide for you I will give you this land I will do everything for you God had already made the provisions then I don't understand the reason why Jacob began to make a vow again for what I'd already promised him that he's going to do. You know, most of the time you are now begin to begin, begin to strike a deal for nothing. God, if you bless me, I will serve you. If you give me a child, I will serve you. If you give me a job, I will serve you. If you bless me, I will give to God. If you do this, I will do this. But God was not asking for that from us. He wasn't demanding any vow from Jacob. Because look at it now. God just said, I will do this. I am going to do this for you. And when Jacob woke up, he said, Oh, this place is the presence of God. Oh, it is the gate of heaven. And the only thing he can do is to is to just set up a, a stone and begin and pour oil on it and anoint it. As if that was not enough, he said, I will if God will be with me and watch over me on this journey that I'm taking. The journey that God had already told you that he will be with you. God had already made provision for that journey for Jacob. Take note of that. God had already promised him that he will be with him. God had already promised that he's going to give him the land. Then why on earth will Jacob again, you know, began to make a vow? <laughs> and say, God, I will do this. You will be my God. God that already said that I am your God. People of God, let's take note of this. God has already said, look, I am your God. I will do this for you. About every aspect of your life, forget about it, is settled. Then Jacob began to say, in fact, everything you will give to me. He said, and of all that you give me, I will give you a tent. And Jacob made that vow with God. Then I, I am noticing something here, which I want us to take note of tonight. That there is a relationship that God wants to establish with all of his children. And in this passage, I am seeing two types of relationship that exist. Now, the kind of relationship that I see Jacob establishing with God here is a transactional relationship. Relationship that is based on transaction. Relationship that is based on what I will do. What I will do provided God we bless me provided God will do this as long as God is doing this for me I will also do what I will serve him Jacob said if you protect me and if you give me clothes and if you give me food he said if you give me food to eat did you read it he said if in verse 20 then Jacob made a vow. 
saying, If God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey, which God had already said he will do. So, to me, this vow is unnecessary. Making vow concerning what God had already provided for is unnecessary. Striking a deal with God for what he, had, he, will, he has already promised, he has already made provision for, even before you came to him. Striking a deal concerning all those things before we serve him is unnecessary. And this is, Jacob said, if you give me what? Food. And, you know, food to eat and clothes to wear. So, what was paramount in the heart of Jacob as he was running away from his brother was what? Protection, food, and what? And clothes. He just wanted to survive. And he said, look, God, if you can provide all this thing for me, then you will be my God. And all those things that you give me, I'll give you, I'll give you the tenth of it. You know, Jacob one was actually basing his own relationship with God upon all those things that what he will receive from God. That God, if you do this to me, oh, you will be my God. But God had already said, look, I am already your God. Even without you doing anything, listen, I am already your God. Even without you saying that, hey, you are going to, you are going to serve me, you are going to, I have already, I am already here. I have, I have already placed myself at your disposal. I am here. I am stretching forth my hands towards you. Just say, here I am. Just come. And that's the kind of relationship that God wanted to establish with Jacob. And what is this relationship? Transformational relationship. People of God, God is not inviting you and I to what? A transactional relationship. Relationship that is based on what we can collect from God. Relationship that is based on what we are going to do for God if He blesses us. Whether we do all those things or not, God has promised that He's going to do what is going to bless us. It's not because somebody serves God that God gives him money. Mm -mm. It's not because of, of your service, of your faithfulness that God gives you children. No. There are several people that are faithful, that are doing everything, but they are still trusting the Lord for money. They are still trusting God for prosperity. But you are prosperity, but they are more faithful than you, you know. So short, just to show to you and I that, look, it is not because of what we are giving to God or because of uh, uh, or what we can collect from Him that He wants us to serve Him. Even without us serving, He has provided all those things. What did you do before the Lord, the Lord give you life? What did you do before He give you He gives you good health? What did you do before He gives you, you know, He gives you a, a connection? What did you do? All those children that God has given to you, brother and sister, what did you do? Is it because of your service? Or is it because of what you have given? Is it because of uh, how good you are? No. So, God is saying that people of God, we should stop being transactional in our relationship with Him. See, some people will say, God, if you bless me, I will do this. That is transactional relationship. God wants a relationship that is based on what? On love. Relationship that is not based on nothing. After all, we didn't give God anything before He saved He sent Jesus Christ on heart. 
what did we what did we give to God? Jacob didn't give God anything before God made up his mind that he was going to help him. Jacob that was even a supplanter. Jacob that was that was a sinner that just robbed somebody of his birthright and that was on the on the run. Yet God came around and said, I, I, I'm, I'm going to help you, regardless of who you are. So it shows to me that the blessing of God upon our lives is not a matter of bargaining. It's not what we bargain for. It's not that we should just say, God, before I serve you. No. That was what Jacob was doing in this place. That was what Jacob was doing here. And it's as if God will say, no, this man doesn't have understanding. It is lack of understanding, brethren, for you and I to base our relationship on what? On what we can get. And this is what is going on in the body of Christ today. In most of our churches today, most of our prayers are based on what we can get. Or what we can collect. Or how God can bless us. And say God bless me. I will serve you. Just like when somebody is telling his boyfriend. As long as you give me money. I will follow you. Just like a relationship that is based on money. There are several marriages like that. That is transactional. That is not based on love. That is not based on transformation. You know, when you work in a place, it is transactional because as long as they pay your salary, you continue to serve them. You know, when you have a friend and your relationship is based on what you can get from one another, it is transactional. When it is not based on transformation, on trying to change one another for good. Or it's not based on love. When a woman enters into marriage based on money, um, no, it is transactional marriage. As long as he's taking care of me, as long as he's giving me money, I will stay with him. But the moment money is not forthcoming again, the marriage will come to an end. That is transactional relationship. And that's the kind of relationship that several of us are having with God today. Transactional relationship with God is not the kind of relationship that God wants you and I, you know, to use to follow Him henceforth. Will you check your heart today? Are you being transactional in your approach with God? Is a deal. God, you do this, I do this. What of if God refuses to do it? Will you still love him? That is the question. And that's why we say rare Christians are changing their minds in the time of trouble, in the time of challenges, in the time of trial. They say, God, as long as you refuse to bless me, sorry, I'd rather go and follow another God. They have forgotten that. They didn't do anything for God to have given them life. They didn't do anything for God to give them to have given them good health. They have done nothing. But because of lack of understanding, they are trying to strike a deal with God. They say, God, as long as you bless me, I will serve me. Why are you in the church? If I may ask this evening, before we go and pray, why are you in the church? Are you here? Because of what you will collect? Or you are here because you love Jesus? Is your relationship based on what you can get? Is your relationship with Jesus Christ? You say, oh Jesus, you follow Jesus, we see you in church all the time. Why? Is it based on transaction? God, bless me, I come. God, you don't bless me, sorry, I won't be around. Is that what you are saying? Because invariably that was what Jacob 
was selling, telling God. God had already promised that I will bless him more. In fact, God had, 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 been, had, been, had been blessing him. He said, then you will be my God. In other words, if God does not do that, then God will not be his God. That is not the kind of relationship that God is expecting from you and her. Brethren, majority of believers today have seen relationship with God as what? Transaction. Rather than what? Transformation. People of God, before we pray this morning, let's ask ourselves, is my relationship with God transactional? Is it based on, on the fact that is blessing me that is the reason why i am following him or it is based on what on love or it is based on the fact that i want my life to be transformed because the purpose of god for coming to jacob was that he wanted his life to be transformed now in genesis 35 that we read before we pray and the Bible says after many years and that is after 20 years that uh, what we were reading in Matthew uh, uh, in Genesis 25 happened let's say it happened like when Jacob was 40 years and in Genesis 35 that it was after 20 years after he has spent his time his life uh, he has married he has spent all of uh, all of his days um, uh, his uh, 20 years with Laban and a lot of things have happened God was saying look at this man this man that we, we promise a glorious future for that was going round 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 serving men that wanted to go into servitude because he had forgotten what we promised him you know after 20 good years god appeared to jacob again that is in genesis 35 that we read and god called him and said jacob go back to bethel my question is that why should God why will God have to remember Jacob to go back to Bethel was it not Jacob that promised God and said God if you keep me in all my journeys which God did not even ask from him because God was the one that promised and God had already made up his mind that he was going to keep Jacob and God did so he kept him throughout those 20 years in the in the land of in the house of Laban God blessed him gave him wives gave him children gave him cattle gave him everything bless him and it was God again that needed to come and remind him you see to show that God was not interested in what? In our transaction, in transactional relationship. What he just wants is what? Is our devotion. Is our love. All those things that we are using as a deal for service, he had already made provision for them. And God told him in Genesis 35, Look at what God said. Follow me back there now to Genesis uh, 35. Yeah. Hallelujah. My prayer for us this evening is that somebody will begin to say, From today, I will serve the Lord without placing any condition. My service to God will be out of love. It will be out of, you know, my relationship with God today will be the kind that will be, will be transformation. Will be the one that 
I just want to follow him so that my life can change so that I can resemble Jesus so that I can know him better and better not because of what I want to collect not because of gain but because of godliness because I want to be like Christ my relationship will be based on that from today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ now look at verse, verse 1 in Genesis 35 as we begin to round up then God said to Jacob go up to Bethel and settle there and build an altar there to God who appeared to you when you are fleeing from your brother look at what is happening now you see it was God God had to come back and say Jacob you need help were you not the one that was saying if God be with me if God do this I will do this and I will do that now and the Bible says so Jacob said to his household and to all who are with him get rid of all the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes then come let us go up to better where I will build an altar to God who answer me in the day of my distress and who has been with me wherever I have gone now that's what Jacob had done now look at verse 9 the Bible says after Jacob returned from Padaranam God appeared to him again and do what and bless him God said to him your name is Jacob but you will no longer be called Jacob your name will be Israel so he named him Israel look at God God wants us to establish what relationship that is what transformational that's what God wants look at it God had to come to Jacob and change his name so the reason why God wants us to establish relationship with him is not because of what we can what we can collect the reason why Jesus Christ is calling you brother and sister is not because of what you he want to give you no he will give you all those things he will give you all those things even without you coming in fact he had already given us Bible says even while we were yet sinners he had died for you even while you were you were a sinner before you came before you decided to be a Christian he had already made provision for all these things for you all those things that many of us are running after that we are using you know are to make to strike a deal with Jesus Christ he had already provided all of them for us but look at it now he had made provision for Jacob here but look at what God wanted to do and God came to him and said go back to Bethel because what I want to do the relationship I want to establish with you is to change your life is to make you better because I know that something is wrong with you even from bad something is wrong you are a supplanter and I must change that destiny now people of God God is calling you and I to what transformational relationship that is the reason why he's inviting us he's not inviting us because of what we can collect if it is what we can collect they are already settled brother will you change your mind today and stop striking on necessary deal with Jesus stop striking on necessary deal we know that you have need he said, Jesus, if you do this for me, I will do this. Oh yes, it is good. God will do all those things. He will do them even, even if you don't serve. He will do all those things. And the Bible says, God changed the name of Jacob to 
to Israel. He transformed his life. That's the kind of relationship that God wants you and I to cultivate. And God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be what? Be fruitful. What did he do? Nothing. What did Jacob do, people of God? Nothing. An increase in number. A nation and a community of nations will come from you. And kings will be among your descendants. The land I give to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you. And I will give this land to your descendants after you. Then God went up from him at that place where he had talked with him. Now, the question is this. Excuse me. I did not see Bible, I did not see in the Bible here or in this story where Jacob fulfilled all those vows. Jacob said, Everything you have provided for me, I will give you the tenth of it. But I was looking for where Jacob fulfilled that vow in this story, in the story of Jacob. I didn't see it there. I said, Jacob, uh uh. You say you will give God 10 of all these things that you have. Where did you fulfill that vow? Rather, it was even God that reminded him to go back to Bethel. So that means if God did not even come back to, to Jacob in Genesis 35, he wasn't ready to go back to Bethel. He was already going. Because he had married a lot of wives, wives that carry their the household idols of their father, and that's why he say all the idols in your in your in your possession, all of you go and hide, go and oh yeah, submit it, submit it, so submit it. He was already moving with idol worshippers, people that can carry household god in their in their paws, in their in their in their bags, and nothing until God had to say oh yeah, all of you. Go back to Bethel. People of God, you can see clearly from the story of Jacob, simply discipline that the type of relationship that God demands from you and I is the one that we do that will transform our life. Relationship that is based on transaction. Relationship that is transactional is not going to actually is not the type i mean that will transform the life of a believer no wonder you see that several believers today they are running after miracles they are running after a lot of things and they forget to establish a relationship that will change their lives they are not interested in the relationship that will change that will make them better that will make that will prepare them for heaven but they are interested in the ones that they can collect from god as long as god is blessing them they say oh no problem we will follow you their relationship is based on what they can collect brother i want you to take to think today your relationship all this your up and down that you are doing is it because your business is still going well is it because you, you see that, oh, God is blessing me, everything is fine? Is that the reason why we still see you around? Is that the reason why you see, oh, the Lord is good, the Lord is good, the Lord is good, hallelujah? Is that the, is that the reason? Yes, we bless the name of the Lord. God will do all those things. Whether we serve him or not, he will do them. He has actually done all of that before we came to him. So why don't we actually enter into that relationship now? Why can't we base our relationship, our following God on, on how our lives can be what? Can be transformed. And we have seen today from the life of Jacob, vividly that what God is looking for is how he can do what how he can transform our lives and we have done nothing the only thing that God wants us to do is to do what is what is worship and that's why God say go back to Bethel go 
to better go back to where i met with you the place of what of relationship and as he was going god said no your name is not going to be jacob again your name will be what will be israel because i know that i met you as as jacob at that point and you left if i do not come back to come and change your life now you will go back to that battle eh? you are not going back to that battle as jacob go back there as now as israel may our life transformed may we begin to cultivate a relationship that will transform our lives not the kind of relationship uh, that we cultivate because of what we want to get such relationship will never last such relationship will not take us anywhere such relationship will always cause confusion will always will, there will always be problem because as long as those conditions are not met that's bound to be problem most of the time that we won't tell god that god bless me i will serve him even when he blesses us do we serve him many people have said god give me a good job when he gives them a good job are they faithful in serving the lord many people have said oh god give me children when he gives them children those children become tool for excuse not to serve the lord again you discover that god is saying i'm not interested in that jacob promised to give god 10 percent of what we have did he pay it i mean did he fulfill uh, the promise did he eventually give it we don't know because the bible does not record where he eventually fulfilled his vow to god but rather god came back to him and said go back to Bethel. and rather god transformed his life and changed his life to now to israel in the book of romans chapter 12 1 to 2 the bible revealed to us there as i read he says, therefore, I hold you, brethren. You know, Paul was writing there, brothers. He said, in view of God's mercy, because of the mercy of God. Look at it now. Because of everything that God has done for us, even all the provisions that God has made for you and I. You see, when we consider all those provisions, why do we need to base our relationship on what we are going to collect? He has already, all those things we want to collect, He has done them. What God demands is our worship. I say, God, He say, 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 come. He said, look at what Paul said. He said, to offer your bodies as what? Living sacrifices. Holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship what god wants is worship and the type of relationship that god is still looking for right from the old testament is transformational not the one that is what that is transactional the transaction has been paid jesus christ has paid it in on our behalf on the cross even before we ask he has paid all he just wants us to come so that our lives can be transformed look at what the bible says say, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world but be what transformed by the renewing of your mind then you will be able to test and approve what god's will is is good pleasing and um, perfect will what did he say he said you know and be transformed by the renewing of what of your mind that's what god wants from you and i as i close and allow us to pray let me read again for you the book of romans the book of romans chapter 8 look at what the bible says to show to you that all those things that people are running after today has been god has provided for them what jacob was running after in the house of laban you know god had already made provision it was because jacob was not you know was not sensitive that was what made him to serve longer than necessary maybe he was supposed to just serve for like uh like seven years there 
and it became 20 years because it was not so sensitive the first thing when he got there was to do what to be on the lookout for women and he was also supplanted and what is supposed to maybe use seven years then he became 14 years then he had to serve for other years you know under Laban but God had made provision for everything that he was serving for but but he never knew that so God had made provision for you and I that he has made provision so there is no need for us rather for us to do what let's cultivate a relationship that is based on love so that our lives can be uh, transformed look at what the, what Paul was saying in the book of Romans chapter 8 I will just read quickly then we pray together he said and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him you know uh, one, another translation we say and, and we know that all things work all things work together all things doesn't just work look at what the Bible says here this translation says and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him in other words all things does not just work together for good it is God that work all those things for the good of those who does what who love him and who is working on our behalf is God are we the one working no is the one working so when somebody now say hey God bless me I will serve him no 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 mm -mm. he said God just I don't want I don't just want your service I want relationship just come around and let's have a relationship don't worry and every other thing will be fine I just want a relationship that will lead to your transformation don't just come and serve me and collect things no I want you to come so that I can do what and do the work of transformation in your life. all those things that you are attaching to your coming don't worry whether you come or not I've already made provision for them but my intention is your transformation is your change is for you to be better is for you to be to be to be, to see me in glory that's what I want for you to your life to reflect Jesus Christ that is what what I want he said he said those people that have been called according to his purpose now for those God for him he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and those he predestined he also called those he called he all uh, he also justified those he justified he also glorified now we say what then shall we say in response to this if God is for us who can be against us brother if God is for you who can be against you instead of you to say God eh, if you be with me I will do this eh, eh. God is saying I'm already with you you don't need to be afraid don't base your relationship with me on what on protection don't base it on that because I have promised that I will pro I will protect you just come 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 let's begin the journey to transformation if you can submit yourself your life to transformation look at what Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew 11 20 he said come unto me verse 28 all you that labor and are heavy laden he said I will give you rest he said take my yoke upon you and learn of me say you will find rest for your soul look at that that is an invitation to what to transformation he didn't say come come and collect things eh mm -mm. God is not the one that dangles uh, uh, goods in order to attract people. God is not Father Christmas that just dangle gifts. He will dang, he be dangling car keys and say, as many of you that will come, I will give you car. God is not like that too. The one that will dangling just to use that car key to attract you so that you can come and serve. That's not what God does. No, 
God is not the one that just be dangling a key, a house key, and say, oh, as many people that will come to me, I will give them this house. No, God is not the one. He doesn't attract people with gifts. He give gift freely. Look at what the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. He didn't, he, he, he's not, he's not, he's not, God is not promising us gift so that we can serve Him, so that we can come. Mm-mm. He has given us gift even when we have not come. What He is he's saying is that let us come so that we can have eternal life. Mm-mm. He's not using gift to attract us. God didn't attract us to Jesus with anything. No, He gives us all, the, all those things freely, freely, freely. But He's saying, just come around so that come on the basis of love, on the basis of love, so that your life can be transformed. Just like we have seen in the life of Jacob here, that He came. You know, God wanted him to come because of the covenant that had already been made for him. Because of the provisions that have been made for him. Just want to just him to come in order for that be a relationship that will lead to what? To transformation. For God so loved the world that he gave us love. And those who believe in him we have eternal life. People of God, look at what the Bible says here. Can you see? Can you see with me? It said in verse thirty-two, He who did not spare His son, His own son, but gave him up for us all, how will He not also, along with Him, graciously give us all things? God, even whether you ask for it, whether as long as you reach out to God in worship and say God not for anything not for gain not because of what I need because I know that all those things that I need have already been provided for but because I just want to worship you I want to follow you based on love and so that you can achieve that transformation you want to achieve in my life. That's what Paul said. Let's give ourselves to him as what? Living sacrifice. Just living sacrifice. Not because of what we want to collect, but because we want transformation and because we love him and so that he can do what? He can transform our life. He said, he who did not spare his own son. God that does not spare Jesus. God that could give us Jesus Christ freely. Why do we need to now base our relationship with him on what we can collect again? If God could give us Jesus, brother, what else do you think he cannot give you? Nothing. Then why do you need now to begin to strike? unnecessary day that God if you bless me I will do this if you give me this I will do this brother let's get away from all of that let's move away from Christians people that base their relationship on what they can collect let me read the concluding passage then I will allow you to pray the Bible says who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen Hallelujah. It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died. More than that, who was raised to life is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Now look at what the Bible says. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who shall, who shall, shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, as it is written. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And he said, for I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor height, nor anything else in all creation, will be able 
to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Look at that now. What God is demanding from you and I is what? Love. Paul said, love. See, who, who, who is it that condemns? Who, who, who can condemn us when we have been justified? What else do we need? Is it protection? Is already there. Is it provision? Is already there. Nothing that we need that God has not done. Say, Christ is the one that has died is there for us. And in us, who shall separate us from from the love of Christ? People of God, what God demands from you and I is what is the love of God, of the love of Christ, the love that nobody can separate you uh, from, the love that nobody can take away from you, the only the love that is poured only on Christ. Any relationship that is based on love is the only relationship that lasts. Any relationship that is transactional can never last. It lasts as long as the transaction remains. And as long as the transaction is over, the relationship also is over. People of God, don't base your relationship on what you can get from the Lord. Let it be on love. Let it be the, be the one that will lead to your transformation. Do you want us to pray together? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise for uh, this study today. Thank you for helping us to look intently into the word of God. Blessed be your holy name. Our prayer is that you will give us understanding. Today, Lord, may we move from transactional love to transformational love. May we move away from transactional relationship to that kind of relationship that is transformational. The one, the relationship that leads to a change of life. Not the one that is just built on collections, on blessings, you know, what we can collect. And we stop there without looking for the one that will eventually change our life for the better and make us to resemble Christ at the end of the day. Please do that in our lives, Father. Walk on our spirit, Lord. Open our eyes so that we can, O oh God Almighty, that which you did in the life of Jacob, that you change his life upside, you change it, O oh Lord, until he became what you wanted him to be. Lord, do that in our lives today and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray.